interesting pieces. Um, these are all Seikos um, and they're all tuners. I thought I'd uh, make a little video today to uh, have a look at the different types of tuners, uh, tuner cans there are, and to maybe help you find the, the right one for you. Um, so I've got them all here in an overview from left to right. Uh, you can see tuners or let's say uh, watches uh, which are not pure tuners but I have the tuner characteristic which is mainly the this shroud uh, and of course a round rounded shape or round kind of watch case um, and the iconic shroud so uh, let's say from left to right um, I've placed them uh, in a rising kind of quality or price range uh, without let's say disclosing or naming the exact prices because this will differ from country to country and the age uh, when they, these are all, uh, let's say, issues of the past few years. So they're not uh, the current collection, but I guess uh, they represent certain uh, groups. So looking at this one, this is, uh, yeah, could arguably, is it a, is it a, a tuna or not? Uh, this is the so-called Arnie which is a watch which has, as you can see, this characteristic shroud, a shroud which protects the, the watch case. Um, it's uh, an iconic watch. Uh, the original one came out in the 80s. Uh, so I call the Arnie because Arnie wore it, Arnold Schwarzenegger wore it in two of the <coughs> iconic uh, action movies of the 80s. I think it was Commando and Predator. Um, and this is, of course, uh, not the, the version it was back then. This is a solar uh, movement, so it uses uh, sunlight to recharge a lithium battery inside the, the watch case. Um, they are very, let's say, um, maintenance-free. They, once they're charged, they just run. You just need to keep them under light. Uh, but, of course, it's still a quartz movement in there. Uh, so it's, let's say, on the entry level kind of watch. This one actually is a bit disappointing in, in, in a way that it, uh, it's made in China. And obviously it, it states that on the case itself. Uh, so um, that uh, maybe in a few years, this will be something considered an outstanding quality statement. But currently, let's say it's not the, the most exciting thing to have on a watch case. Um, yeah, other than that, it has uh, it's a Digi Anna watch. It has some digital display on top, which is pretty weak, I must say. It's not really uh, in sunlight and so on. It's not really very legible, uh, but anyway, it's there. It's it's just this iconic design. Um, it has a, a bezel, a 120 click bezel, uh, so it. Show me you can hear. It gets the job done. Um, and uh, has a pretty good feel to it. It's okay. It's and it lines up, which is quite uh, let's say important for having a Seiko to be able to say that. So this is we start down at the at the lower price segment. This would be the entry level. Then we come to this um, so-called Seiko uh, Monster Tuner. Um, so it's it's a pretty big watch. It has this tuna can design. You can see the shroud here also in this case, uh, actually uh, made of ceramic, um, according to the case back. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, a round design, the shroud. It's an automatic movement in here for 36 movements, so not top notch uh, movement, but it's automatic. Uh, so that already is more of the liking for us watch enthusiasts. Um, what is really nice on this, I really love the, the shape of this uh, case bag, which really snuggles, <laughs> snuggles, and fits perfectly on on a, on the wrist. Um, really good, um, and uh, yeah, that's one of the um, let's say the special features of this watch. Um, it has 120 click bezel, um, and uh, yeah, pretty nice color design. This is a Paddy special edition. Actually, this one is. Um, you know, party edition, but it's actually, you can see it there, uh, 
special Eddie Toyn. <laughs> so this is uh, some kind of a, a typo laser marking mistake that was done and it went out to market. They tried to recall them, but uh, by then a lot of uh, collectors already were reluctant to give back the watch. <laughs> so, um, this is one of them. Uh, yeah, or it's a fake. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> it is weird to have that kind of a mis uh, uh, misspelling or a typo on an official watch. Um, it's called the, the Monster Tuner, I guess, because uh, it does have some characteristics of the of the monster, mainly the bezel, uh, the hands. So uh, it's a combination of the tuner and the, the monster. Um, I mean, I don't have a monster here now, but the monster also has this kind of uh, shroud, I guess you could call it so. Uh, could have put it in here also um, as a kind of, let's say, a, a tuna uh, um, design. But anyway, not just have the others here. So this would be more or less also an entry level, but already at a higher price point. Similar to this one, I guess they're more or less the, the same price point. This is a very underrated watch in my opinion. This is um, the Baby Tuna. So, I mean, baby, we're talking about 46 millimeter diameter, I think it is, uh, and the others are at 48, the, the uh, Monster Tuna. So we're talking about big watches here. Um, and uh, in this case, um, this is the Yellowfin Baby Tuna. Um, it's uh, obviously um, a yeah, stainless steel case. We have this shroud, stainless steel shroud here. Um, and uh, what we don't have in the watches that uh, we just saw is uh, uh, they don't have a sapphire crystal, they're all hardlex crystal. Um, but I mean, if you take care of them, uh, you don't uh, if you use them as a daily beater, then of course they'll get beat up, bent, uh, scratched, and so on. But uh, if you take care of them, they're, they're all right. Um, so this would be uh, the side view we have. This, uh, um, what do you call it, at the four o'clock position, we have um, our little pop out screw in. Um, what do you call it? Uh, just missing the word. <laughs> That's the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, yeah, I already forgot the name. Must be uh, uh, amnesia. Um, the crown, now I got it, sorry about that, just a lapse. So we have the, the, the crown at the four o'clock position here, screw in, has a nice pop to it. Uh, 4R36 movement here also with the date-date complication. Um, so not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, also uh, the workhorse, the, it's, it's one of the uh, Seiko workhorses. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, we have uh, yeah, beautiful, this, this kind of contrasting yellow, uh, the yellow hand, uh, and this 15 minute kind of yellow uh, highlight here. Um, so they, they come in lots of uh, different color schemes and designs. Uh, I really like them. Uh, they're automatic and they, they look absolutely beautiful. The size is just uh, really sweet. Uh, not too big, but it does have a good wrist presence. Um, so you can get them in, uh, yeah, with a gold shroud. We can get them um, with special colored dials, the you know, deep blue uh, dials, uh, this kind of frozen dial. Absolutely huge variety. Um, here also the, the crown is also similar to the uh, the monster kind of uh, heavily knurled uh, kind of crown. So. Um, yeah, this one here is called the Baby Tuna. Here also the bezel, similar design as the uh, the Monster. Then we come to an interesting piece also, which is uh, this party special edition, so-called Kinetic Tuna. So these are real, let's say, very sturdy looking, beautiful watches, um, very sporty watches. This is a GMT. So as you can see, the red, uh, the red hand there is a 24 hour second time zone. Um, we have a rotating bezel, 120 click bezel. Um, that's a, a metal uh, stainless steel insert, if I'm not mistaken. 
Um, what is interesting here is um, you have actually two buttons. Uh, they're screwed, screw down crowns. And what I like about this one is that it has a, a red color coding there so that you can really see when your crown is not uh, screwed in. So that's a real nice visual kind of uh, indicator to remind you, you know, something is wrong, please fix it um, and get it screwed in so that it uh, has the full uh, waterproof function. The, the upper one is just to, if you unscrew it, just to check the, uh, the charge. No other function than that. What is very nice is this, uh, our console also has this shroud, which as you can see is not straight up. So it's, it's really uh, it's slanting and it's almost touching the, the bezel. It's really highly precise. I mean, you could hardly get a, a hair in between there. It's uh, yeah, precision work. And uh, what I really like is this um, kind of anodized uh, inside the watch, the watch case is, is a different color than the stainless steel shroud, which is around it. So, um, yeah, very beautiful, nice color combination. Paddy, of course, the black, uh, the blue, white, red is always uh, a beautiful kind of color combination. Right. Um, this is a kinetic movement. So what the problem with this is, uh, so it's, it basically charges a lithium battery also based on uh, movement. So um, it's actually a quartz movement, which um, as you can see now it's stopped. Um, so this, this watch really requires uh, high attention. You need to really move it. Um, so you can hear it, this rotating element in there, which uh, you need to really vigorously shake it to get it moving. And the power charge uh, should be several months, but I've never managed to get it up to that level. It, uh, it always uh, dies off, so you need to, you need to uh, as someone once said, uh, you need to take this one out as you would take your uh, dog out for a walk. You'd have to uh, almost daily take it out and, and uh, actually just wearing it is not enough. You need to really shake your hand uh, vigorously for it to, to get some kind of charge. Even the watch winder doesn't work on this. So, um, yeah, other than that, fantastic watch to wear, really love it. Um, sporty design and the, um, yeah, the overall sturdy look. All right, then we come to, let's say, uh, this would be what we would call a classic tuna. The others were all combinations, monster tuna, baby tuna, all this. So this is a real tuna can. Um, the iconic design, as you can see, also this beautifully, this is a paddy version, this is a limited version, uh, 700 pieces, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this has a 7C46 quartz movement. A lot of watch collectors will say, what? You know, quartz, that's that's not good and not a real watch, but uh, I mean, this, this, these quartz, uh, quartz movements are, are a different level, they are. Um, actually um, made of metal parts, made of uh, serviceable parts. Um, they have seven jewels, if I'm not mistaken, and um, they are used, um, they're manufactured um, they're using uh, MEMS technology also, if I'm not mistaken. That is kind of micro, um, yeah, special, uh, highly accurate manufacturing procedure. Um, for the for these parts that are um, um, used to assemble this watch, so run about five years the battery lifetime, and it will be indicated on the back um, when the battery uh, was exchanged or when it will be uh, required to be exchanged. 120 click bezel. Actually, this one does not fully line up. Yeah, has a bit of back play. Um, so actually there's a like an inner circle there um not 100 sure what that is it's obviously some kind of design feature um but um yeah you just barely see it doesn't really have that much of a function so this is already a bit more um let's say uh on the uh, i mean we're, talk we're not talking about really uh, high uh, luxury watches or anything uh, but in terms of price, uh, these ones are already a little bit 
more expensive than the ones that we looked at previously. Also only hard lex crystal, um, what people really miss on the, uh, the, the the latest designs, as you can see at the bottom, there's this um, professional, um, the wording there. Um, so yeah, nowadays you have the Prospects X, which is actually up here. Um, but uh, uh, wait a minute, uh, no, that's, do we see that another one? No, I think they all have that. I have an old one, which still has the Marine Master um, uh, labeling down here. So actually this is already the, the, the Prospects X up there and the, uh, yeah, the, only the profession, not the Marine Master, but it is a Marine Master tuna, 300 meter waterproof. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a screw down crown which is, uh, yeah, has a very nice feel to it. They're all on, on silicon straps. The silicon straps are really good, very subtle. Uh, this kind of snake skin uh, back, which uh, yeah, improves the uh, grip on the wrist. And then you can see all this kind of printing down here. Uh, actually, the, the date um, of the uh, battery expiry also there. We have a day date complication. Uh, this is the, in kanji, the, uh, the day displayed there. So that is uh, pretty cool. Okay, so now we come to the last but not least. We come to the, let's say, top notch uh, tuna cans. Uh, still has a 7C46 um, movement. Uh, in this case, it has sapphire crystal. Um, uh, the the bezel is actually um, stainless steel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but the shroud itself is uh, ceramic and metal, so so-called surmet, uh, ceramic metal combination. Um, and uh, why is it called the violet ocean tuna? Well, um, this uh, this shroud, which is now totally, I don't know, smudged. <laughs> usually uh, not like that um, so the shroud itself has this really let's say um, copper like shine to it and uh, in certain light it will really look uh, towards the violet color that's why this one is called the violet ocean tuna it's a thousand meter uh, tuna um, does not have a helium escape valve so um, as you can see this is uh, Basically, unicoque, uni, yes, unicoque, monocoque, no, unicoque, uni, unicoque. <laughs> it's basically one piece of metal. Yeah. Um, it's uh, so it's assembled from the top. You cannot open up the, the case pack. It's uh, uh, one piece, and then you just assemble it from the front or from the top, which. Uh, they they have this special gasket, the yellow gasket, which uh, makes a helium escape valve unnecessary for this watch. So that is one of the amazing features that it's uh, extremely waterproof. We have a day date complication. In this case, um, it has uh, actually English and German language, so no kanji there, which I honestly prefer. I, I like to have the kanji. Um, we have a sign crown here with the prospect sign. Uh, you can see that. Um, of course, this is heavily loomed. We have loom also applied here to the first 20 minute. Um, the, uh, the printing here uh, figures. So um, it has a really amazing loom, as do all the others also, of course. Uh, that's what they're also well known for. Um, so, I mean, these are the different types of, uh, of tuners that you can have. Um, yeah, uh, it will depend on what kind of watch you like to wear. Uh, do you like to wear automatic? Do you like to wear, um, uh, let's say, uh, um, are you okay to wear um, a yeah, quartz watch, even if it's a good one, but it's still a quartz watch. Um, and uh, I, what I can say is they are all really pretty big. Um, and they are tool watches, uh, so you really need to have, uh, let's say, that uh, wrist size, and uh, they are more on the sporty side. Okay, guys, that's about it for today.
Peace out. Bye. Thanks for watching.